Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. Well, there's no first team fixture of course for us to look forward to this weekend, so we thought we'd take the opportunity to bask in a little bit of nostalgia with two legends from the 1980s, Ian Snowden and Pat van den Hal. Looks well, you mate, doesn't he? It does look well. He looks getting older by the day. Uh, might be getting older, <laughs> but he still looks fit, doesn't he? Compared I'm, to me, he does anyway. And me. And it's fantastic to see you around a place at Goodison Park, Pat, back involved with the football club and seem to be enjoying yourself. I am, yeah. It's uh, every day's different. It's enjoyable. I look like get up every morning. Look forward to coming in. Yeah, it's different. It's great that does when you when you're back at the football club mm. that you love, and you wake up and you look forward to going into work. And it's the same when we were playing, Pat. Isn't it? Yeah. It if you, if you if you had a manager that you you wanted to go in and enjoy your training, you always look forward to it. And we're doing exactly the same. Um, now working for Everton, we, we love getting up and coming into work. I think it's great for the punters as well because they hadn't seen Pat for such a long time, mm. and that was. A part of the fabric all over again. Yeah, he is. He uh, he went on his various ways to different countries, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, another show. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's great to see him back. And I tell you what, since he's come back as well, he puts so much effort into the job that he does. Mm. Uh, everybody appreciates that as well, and uh, he's very well liked in in the community circles as well. We we'll hear a lot more from both Pat and Snods as we go through this week's show. But talking of being away from the country. The first team squad are currently doing some warm weather training in Dubai. We caught up with Yannick Balassi at the end of day one. Yannick, that looked like a, a really good session here in the warm weather. Uh, just describe what you were doing here this morning, your first morning here. Well, um, obviously uh, training, first of all, but uh, it's a bit of a aerob aerobic capacity training, you know, a lot um, interval training, which is great for myself, you know, something that um, we really had the chance to really get into myself, so for me it's a bonus. What will be the benefits of the warm weather training over the next few days? Well, hopefully come back sharper, you know. I um, tend to find that when I, well, personally, when I train myself in heat, you know, I come back to the normal climate of England, you know, naturally just feel a little bit quicker than what I would do normally, so hopefully that's the benefit for myself. Have you experienced this before? Have you gone on a, a warm weather training break uh, during the season before? No, it's the first time. You know, I've only been away when I've been injured. But you know, sometimes when I go with the national team, DRC, you know, that's the time where I get to a chance to train in warm weather, and I normally come back better for it. Obviously, it's great to see your your smiling face again. Yeah. It's been a, a long, arduous journey for you over. The past 12 months or so, you must be chomping at the bit to get back into the games and get and get playing your part. Definitely, to be honest, you know, I think you know, I probably played a lot more than I expected or imagined, you know, a year ago when I was looking at when I was going to come back. So overall, it's been a it's been a it's been a great achievement for the way I've come back, and you know, I'm just looking forward to trying to uh, trying to get better because obviously the the start bit's all uh, adrenaline, and then you hit. You kind of hit a phase where you hit a brick wall and now I'm trying to build myself back up again and I feel like I'm getting that slowly and that only helps when the team's confident as well. So if all the boys are confident winning and like, like come on and, you know, ha be part of that, you know, that will lift me up as well. So now Janik is back in the first team fold ahead of expected, which is, which is great. I was, I would call it a gasp. When, mm. when, he, when they said they were actually going to play because I thought Yannick were going to be at least another couple of months and he'd only played, what, 45 minutes or so or an hour in the, in the under-23s. Uh, to have him back was a massive boost, uh, especially not only for the fans but for him himself because when, when you're injured and you have a long-term injury like that, there's no worse, worse place to be is at a football club just going in the gym day in, day out, seeing the players go out on the training pitch enjoying themselves, playing in games, you want to be part of that. That's why you're a footballer. So uh, mentally, it's, it's very tough, but he, he's done fantastic. Well, to get back as quick as he did, uh, with no setbacks mm. as well, is uh, it's testament to him as well. Every single player, Pat, has long spells out with injuries. You were no exception, neither was Snods. Mm. It's important to be patient, isn't it, I suppose? When you were injured in the 80s, you wanted to get right back. You wanted to be playing before you were fit, probably. Oh, it's always the way, isn't it, really? But um, I did have an injury, and I was out for like a good like few months, and it it it's, it just keeps on playing on your mind, you know. All you keep thinking about is getting back, getting mm. back, and the sooner the better. But sometimes it works against you mm -hmm. because you come back too quick, and then 
back to square one. Yeah, it was perhaps yeah. different in our time as well, does because you were under pressure to get back. The manager wanted you back. If you, were you wanted part, to get didn't, back, didn't you, you wanted to get back, and they kind of rushed you because they wanted mm. you in, back in the team. Whereas now, you've got sports scientists, you got the medical staff all around you saying, "No, he's not quite ready," and you're wanting to say, "Yeah, I am ready." Mm. But, but you're being your held body, back. Your body can tell you sometimes, can't mm. it? Howard Kendall was the sort of manager you wanted to get back for. Oh yeah. And the team, and the like, mm. fellow pros, you know. Mm. Is that what you miss when you're out injured, the banter in the dressing yeah. room? Yeah, because it's a lonely place. We, we were quite fortunate. Our physio, John Clinkard, was oh, a funny yeah. lad, weren't right, he? Yeah. He was great. great to be around if you were injured. You didn't want to be in there, obviously, oh. but he made it enjoyable and he made it as though you weren't lonely, you weren't, you weren't mm. forgotten. And you could have some good banter with Clinks. He were really, really good, but yeah, you want to be out on the training pitch. You want to be in around the players, don't you, Pat? That's the main and, thing, uh, yeah. Was he one of the lads, John Clinkard? Yeah, he was all right, wasn't he? Yeah, great lad. Can't great tell lad. you too many stories. <laughs> but he was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that summed Everton up, didn't it? We even had a celebrity physio yeah, at the time. We did. Magnum, uh, Magnum they called him, wasn't it? <laughs> Tom Selleck. Uh, Big six foot three, big tash, and uh, it's coming to something is it when the physio's getting fan mail. I know. I'm sure. I'm sure I caught him signing autographs loads <laughs> of times. You know, probably did. <laughs> <laughs> While the first team are over in Dubai, Snods getting some warm weather training, mm. it'll obviously do everybody the world of good. The home form I'd like to speak about mm. because 17 points out of 24, it's been terrific. It has been terrific. Uh, we've had one or two groans and moans from the crowd when we've not particularly played well but we've got the results. The last two uh, two performances at home I've, I've really enjoyed. Uh, we've played with energy. Um, I don't think the boss really knows yet his best 11, but the lads that are playing, that are coming in, coming out or whatever, the squad now is realising <coughs> that there's 11 places up for grabs uh, and they're all fighting for the place and, it, and it's good. That's how it should be. Uh, we want to make Goodison a fortress. It used to be when, when Pat were playing in that 80s team, they, they were unbeatable at home, uh, really was. So you want to get back to that and as form at Goodison has been good. The fans that used to go in the mid 80s, Pat, would go to Goodison Park not expecting Everton to win, knowing full well that Everton were going to win. Did you feel like yourself in the dressing room when you looked around and you saw all the those oh, yeah, definitely. great players? I think the players knew it as well. I remember one game where we had um, we had to beat QPR at uh, home. Mm -hmm. Without the crowd being there, we knew as soon as we was walking down the tunnel, we had a smile on our face. <laughs> and it was not taking the mick on, but mm. we knew, we was that confident that we was going to get a result and win the league on that day. How good must that That's a great be, yeah. feeling. Isn't it? Unbelievable. It's, it's a tremendous feeling. What was Bayern Munich like walking up the tunnel then, Pat? Because even well, when I watch it, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, that, it was a massive game. All right, we went over there. We got what we wanted, really. Yeah. It was a tough great game. result. Yeah, great, great result. But um, to go 1 0 down, we thought, well, here we go. But the makeup of the boys was, was never going to give in anyway. Mm. And once we got to 1 1, then that crowd just lifted off. And from then on, we knew we was going to do it. It was an astonishing See, yeah. night, it really was. I think it was a good night. The, the Everton the Community Gala dinner the other night, it was a really terrific night and just reward for everybody, Pat included, mm. that put such magnificent work in on behalf of the football club. The place looked immaculate when you walked in. You felt the presence of everybody and, and it looked great. Um, but for me, the likes of Pat and all the volunteers and all the helpers that are there day in, day out, earn massive respect from me. And it's all right for the players and myself and Diamond and Sharpie and yourself to, to go out to these events, but these are doing it day yeah. in, day out. And it's fantastic what they've got. And we're the best. Everything mm -hmm. in the community are the best without a shadow. Biggest and the best without a shadow of a doubt. I want to ask you about a guy called Lee Johnson, Pat, who was, by his own admission, he was, he was drifting, he was homeless for about 18 years. Everything in the community turned his life around. And he is such an inspirational figure and somebody that you've got to know really well. Yeah, um, must have been very difficult for Lee that stage. But um, he had to work hard to get back, like mm. we all did. You know, it wasn't easy for me either when I'm coming back to something like this. But um, he's done extremely well. Is it fair to say that the community saved his life? Well, to a certain degree, but I think mm. he has to do most of it himself. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So he had a choice whether to go in and do what he, he's doing now, or he couldn't stay where he was. Mm. 
So I think he, <laughs> he made the right choice. Yeah, you, know, the right you, you see the film of him uh, when, when we do I anything, when we it. have the... And I tell you what, I still get a lump in my throat knowing what he's done for his life. Because mm. he's a great lad, isn't he? Yeah, he's fine. a great lad, and mm. I think it's, it's fantastic that he's done it and Everton have done it to help him. I just like seeing him with a smile on his face, because mm. like yourself, he clearly enjoys what he does. Oh, he does, yeah. It's like every day's different for us, you know, and it's mm. exciting to, to come in and meet all these people, different people, and you get to know them, and it's like giving back, you know. Mm. You, you know, people help you, like Everton Football Club helped me and Lee, and we hopefully can return that by helping other people you certainly in are. small ways. Certainly yeah. are returning it in bucket loads. And that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show after the break. Plenty more to come from Pat and Snods. We'll also hear from the legend that is John Motson, and we'll show you how Everton under-18s beat Liverpool last weekend. Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. I'm at USM Finch Farm in the company of Pat van den Howe and Ian Snowden. It's not, as we said, right at the start of this week's programme. No first-team fixture to look forward to this weekend. And I suppose that's why it was so important to go into this little break on the back of a good win, which we got against Palace. We certainly did. I thought it was a good performance as well. People were saying that Palace were under strength because they had a few injuries, but I don't buy into that. I really don't. The, the squads that you assemble at the beginning of the season are strong squads, so they had, a, they had a good side out there, but I thought we were on as metals, especially after the Arsenal defeat and the manner of the Arsenal defeat. We had to bounce back. Uh, we had to show our fans at Goodison that uh, we are a team, and I thought we did that. I thought there were some good individual performances from the boys. Uh, three or four of them really stood out. Uh, Gilfie, obviously, Wayne in his midfield role. role. Martina at left back, I thought, particularly played well. Mm. So, yeah, it was good. We got the goals, we got the victory, needed the victory as well to just extend that gap from the bottom three. So, uh, yeah, it was a good performance. Memorable day all round, and none more so than for John Motson. The BBC broadcasting legend was reporting from Goodison Park for the very last time. And Goodison Park was where it all began for John Motson back in December 1969 when he commentated on an Allen Ball goal to nil win against Derby County for BBC Radio 2. We caught up with John Motson last weekend. Well, the first one ever was the one I'm holding here. Um, Everton, Derby County on the radio in 1969. Um, I just crept in with a, a commentary in the 60s, actually, um, and Everton beat Derby 1-0 that day. And uh, here I am doing my last game at Goodison today. Um, but I've had some fantastic moments at this ground over the years. Uh, well, Everton home and away, really. And um, I've been really pleased with the way, you know, people have been very, very kind to me at this club. And, and the, today has been a prime example of that. Are there any occasions here that really stick in your mind across those years? Well, there were one, obviously the European games and the cup ties and Howard Kendall's team and, you know, the way Everton were in, in that great period, you know, when he, when he um, won so much. Um, in fact, when I first started, the manager here was Harry Catterick, so that lets you know how long ago it was. Uh, <laughs> and I've seen it all the way through to, uh, to Sam Allardyce and there have been many, many... Um, people I've met and players of course over the years I mean you know when do you think Alan Ball was playing when I started commentating and players like that and Joe Royal it's all fantastic and um, and even you know obviously Wayne Rooney and everybody else who, who's worn the Everton shirt and uh, it's been a real privilege to work here. And you had a fantastic ovation at half-time today. It must mean a lot to realise how much you mean to a lot of people. Well, that came as a complete surprise. I didn't expect that to happen. It hasn't happened anywhere else, so I shall always remember Goodison for that. Thank you. He's still got the most distinctive voice in football for me, Motty. He was the voice of football, wasn't he? Match of the day. I uh, used to watch it as a, as a young kid, and then when I started playing, he was still the voice of football. Match of the day, he used to get home. John Watson's voice and, <laughs> and I remember playing in a few games when uh, I watched myself back as well and he were commentating and it, it was fantastic, the best. Did you used to like watching yourself playing on Match of the Day, Pat, when you were on the telly? Not really, no. No? Can't remember that far back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. When did you start playing football? Did you kick a ball about in the street with your mates? Uh, yeah, I started very young, 10-11 uh, on my own, just kicking the ball against the wall and then eventually small clubs uh, ended up at Arsenal when I was 13. Right. Chelsea 50. And then um, left home, 16 years old, went to Birmingham. Um, signed Apprentice. 17, signed Pro. 
You were telling us upstairs before we oh, came down here, Pat, about your, your first team debut. Just just tell us again. Well, it was... Uh, <laughs> I did pretty well on a tour in Spain. And uh, Jim said, Jim Smith, he said to me, he said, well, you're going to play. You're going to... You, you're starting. So I went, oh... 17-year-old, Pat? 17 years old. Debut. <laughs> in front of 30,000. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, I was a bit nervous. Walking down the tunnel, my legs were all over the place. Walking onto the pitch... Knowing that I'm going to play against uh, England's international, Peter, Peter Barnes. Barnes. Yeah. So, uh, needless to say, I had an absolute nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to swear there, but uh, things <laughs> didn't really change then, even when you come to Everton, did they really? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so um, no, it was a, a, a learning experience. A tough baptism, shall we oh, say? I would say, yeah. Peter Peter Barnes, he was a player, though, wasn't he? Oh, was a special player. player. Quick, Slow go inside, me. outside, yeah, in, and uh, yeah, plenty of pace as well, yeah. Pat, didn't he? Horrid day, I think. Yeah. Did you ever play against Pat Van den Nuts? No. I did, and he, he don't recall it because he did something to me that I... <laughs> honestly, I was playing for Doncaster in the FA Cup. Well known, I always have a word with Sharpie about it. Doncaster played Everton in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Billy Bremner, then my manager, I was 19 year old, a bit hot headed of myself, warned me, stay away from Van der Nau. Don't get involved, don't get involved with him. I want to see 11 men on the pitch at the end of the game. Two minutes into the game, Gladys Street, and they get a corner. What does Pat do? We're grappling at the near post. He can't remember nah. it, see, because he used to do this every week. <laughs> Honestly, so we're grappling away. Next thing, he turned around and just went bang. And buttoned me on the head. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm telling you, it's Pat, you, you seriously happened. You buttoned me on the he head. He only came out with this story last week. <laughs> so I've not seen you for 20 years. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I was away for 20 he's, years. He's harboured a grudge for 25 <laughs> it did. years. Honestly, he just buttoned me on the head. And I like, my head had gone, and I could see Bremner going. And I just had to just let it ride. But now, what people forget, or what they think of Pat, he's got the, he had the nickname Psycho Pat. And I'm not just saying it because he's here. Mm. This fella could play. He was elegant. He was good on the ball. Never really get defensively. He was sound. On what an engine! Up, back in training, we did we did 12 minute runs. He'd be at the front, no problem. Glad Alongside enough. you, I no, I was about 20. Me, I would be Sharpie and Ratters and Alan Harper. We <laughs> were we know. were bad, weren't we? <laughs> uh, but. As a player, wow, you'd have him in your team any day. I think it's probably fair to say back in the mid-80s when you joined Everton Football Club, the Evertonians probably didn't know a great deal about you. No, Was the move a surprise to you as well, Pat? Oh, I, mean, I turned up in training at uh, Birmingham and Ron Saunders was the manager. And um, before training, he got us all in a circle. He said, well, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> so he just stood there and he said, right, he pointed at one, two, three, four players and he said, you're going there for so much and... Kevin Dillon, Watford, 100 grand or 200 grand. And then he pointed at me and I thought, oh, where am I going now? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when he mentioned Everton, I mean, it was a massive shock to me because they'd just won the FA Cup in Watford. I thought, what are they want me for? I just didn't have a clue. And he said, straight away, get changed and get yourself up to uh, Liverpool. Didn't even know where it was. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even know what train to get to Liverpool. But uh, like... Eventually got up there and then um, I had to meet Howard Kendall <laughs> and then uh, the rest is the rest. <laughs> <laughs> did you get on with Howard Very as soon well. as you met him? Oh, Everybody did, He was the best, weren't he, Pat? Yeah, for me, yeah. top class. That's, top a, that's, class. A, that's a real Howard Kendall signing, isn't it? Because he knew that John Bailey was a real mm -hmm. crowd favourite. We just won the FA Cup, mm -hmm. but he obviously saw in Pat an enormous amount of quality. So he made the decision. That's why we were the best. That's why he's been the best manager Evans ever had. He, he, he knew a player. And uh, you're right, Bales. Uh, I know Neville rates him very, very highly. Mm. Uh, I remember him winning that cup that I watched with his big hat on. Mm. And I thought, terrific player. But mm. I would know he needed to strengthen again and, and brought Pat in. And uh, he was there for many, many years. And uh, what a, what a judge Howard Kendall was. I've hosted a few dinners where yourself and Bales have been on the stage together and oh, the yeah. banter between the two is, mm. is really good. He's, he's a great pal of yours, Pat, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Um, we used to run together. We went to Canada and various other places. And All right, the initial stages of when I joined and yeah. John, he wouldn't shake me hand. We had that little bit of a, <laughs> a barrier, if mm. I may say. 
But uh, over the years, we got to know each other, and he's a very good friend of mine now. Yeah. That must have been some room. <laughs> oh, we're room quite with John Bailey. <laughs> were you ever in there, you two, uh, at no. the same time? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just change track a mm. little bit, Snods. The under-18s last weekend against Liverpool, beat yeah. them 3-1, and you saw it. Yeah, me and Diamond came up. We had 20 minutes watching the 16s, which I feel is important as well. Mm. That if we can just stand there and give him a bit of encouragement, it was one all when we left after 20 minutes and then walked up to the 18s to find out that we were great, we were leading 2-0. We actually saw the third goal to go 3-0. Uh, and then me and Diamond had to go down to Goodison to do our duties. But the first thing I wanted to know as soon as we got to go, how did it end? And it ended up 3-1 and we were doing commentary. Mm. That was on the Crystal Palace and before we did anything, I want to say, I want to mention what a great result. Cause any result against Liverpool we get, whether it's under 10s, right to the first team, you want to you wanna, you wanna spout about. Mm. And it's a great performance, great result. And I, I know Paul Tate was absolutely delighted with his team. Always oh, nice to beat Liverpool. You played at Anfield when Sharpie scored that wonder goal, Pat, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that yeah, was tremendous, that. And got the celebration a bit wrong? Uh, slightly wrong, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've just remembered two things, basically three things stand out in my mind. Gary Steam is not going to into Sharpie. Yeah. And his first touch was mm. a make look when it turned and he knocked out of a grobble, isn't it? And then uh, when it went in, I started running towards the Reds and I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously I was. Yeah, it was only a few games in then, yeah, yeah. and uh, I quickly reversed <laughs> and uh, got back to our own end. You know what I mean? So it was uh, a bit daunting, that. Yeah, that could have gone horribly wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big weekend for you coming up, Snods, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going up to Doncaster. <laughs> uh, there's a game up there, Doncaster versus Fleetwood. Don't sound the most inviting game to be going up there, but I'm going to see my family. But I'm getting inducted into the Doncaster Hall of Fame which I'm very proud of, mm, I really am. Right, I think any club you play for, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, it is fantastic. I started my career there, captained them, managed them, so I, I'm delighted uh, that, I've, that I've got in there and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going up on Saturday. But Doncaster Rovers Hall of Fame, Pat, what about that? Doncaster legend, then. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Yeah. Well done. You went buttered, a Doncaster legend. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what a great way to end the show. I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed to Pat Van Den Howe and as always to Ian Snowden. Hope you've enjoyed watching us. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.